Okay. Um, as I promised, um, I think in one of my lectures, I said uh, I had done a few of these uh, simulations using GeoGebra. So I thought I'll put out uh, one or two videos, may not be directly related to the course, but I think for those who are curious uh, to try this out, uh, this, uh, the animations that I have done using GeoGebra, if you wanted to use that tool, I thought it may be a good idea to uh, <clears throat> tell you how to go about that. Of course, you guys, uh, most of you guys are at this age are smarter than uh, what I am. Uh, I would like to let you know that I myself have played around this with only about uh, for a couple of months. So I'm not an expert on this. Um, so okay let's get started so uh, i'm not going to get into details of how to install geogebra it's uh, very easy uh, it's available across platforms uh, so you should be able to go ahead and uh, install that uh, this is the, the kind of uh, um, uh, when, when you type geogeb open G click on geogebra classic this is what it opens into uh, you have uh, a set of menus, you also have a command window here, uh, you could type the same things, uh, whatever functions that are available on the menu here through a command process. Then these are things that you can tweak uh, um, <coughs> the various things here. So for example, if I click on this, uh, it will hide the axis. If I now click on it, it again shows up. I can have uh, no grid or I can have uh, uh, with a grid because with a grid during construction especially is very helpful. right? All right, so let me uh, kind of meddle around with this. Uh, this uh, seems to be um, so. Let's let's. Uh, the axis is kind of small, so I want to change the axis. Before I do that, I'll change uh, the settings for the font size. Uh, I'll make it 18 point uh, and save settings, so that becomes a standard uh, 18 point setting. All right, uh, then I would like to change the axis here. So if I uh, uh, let me see, I, I'm kind of randomly clicking here. So we go back here. So let me make this uh, minus 10 to 10 uh, centimeters uh, is the x-axis. Of course, this is a rectangular uh, graph sheet kind of thing that it comes up with. So if I maintain the 1 is to 1 uh, ratio, uh, then uh, uh, the y, uh, sorry, uh, I don't know why it went to minus 10 is what I want. So if I now make this 1 is to 1, and I lock it, let's say, so Y uh, goes for something like that, that's fine. All right, so we set that, and let me, uh, the this command is basically used to move, so you can kind of uh, center it, pull it down, so you have something like this. You can zoom through the mouse, uh, the wheel of the mouse, uh, if you push it toward away from you, it will zoom out, uh, zoom in, if you push it towards you, it zooms out. So we zoom out. And let me again move it uh, so that you know the y-axis is here, the x-axis is here. All right. So as I said, uh, my first uh, thing is to show you how to construct a crank rocker. And uh, to construct that crank rocker, I am going to show you. Um, yeah, the first thing is, of course, I am going to construct the fixed link. Then I am going to choose a crank. Uh, then, of course, complete the thing by selecting the coupler and the once the dimensions are selected, uh, form the coupler and the uh, rocker. <coughs> All right, so the um, uh, first thing to do is to uh, select the fixed pivots. That's what I'm going to do. So I say point, that represents one fixed pivot location. Now I can put that arbitrarily anywhere and uh, I'll just choose this. This happens to be A. Uh, and you can see on the left-hand side uh, in the input, it gives the coordinates, four comma one. The y, -ax y coordinate is one, x coordinate is four. Now, uh, to go consistent with, uh, I will move to this arrow uh, menu, click on this A, and I would like to call that O2, right? So I'll go there and say settings, uh, I'll call this uh, O, and if I put an underscore 2, it becomes a subscript. So here, I now have O2. Now just to demonstrate for you that I can do this without actually using the menu, I can go here and say O4, I'll say O underscore 4, um, is basically equal to uh, let me move it by two centimeters so I'll call it six comma one right uh, sorry oops yeah that's fine six comma one so there you go now since I said 04 equal to I got this 04 out here I could have done this by uh, clicking on this uh, point here and, and clicking over here and that would also be uh, an okay way to do this 
now i want to join o204 by a line so this uh, this line uh, command is basically a, a line which goes from minus infinity to infinity of course on a computer from one end to the other uh, a segment is of course uh, uh, limited to these two points so we want a segment so i'll do that i will uh, join click on o2 and i say that the, it ends at this point o4 so you can see here it says f equal to segment o204 that's the command uh, in uh, geogebra to create a line segment the uh, measure uh, is 2 centimeters f is of course the nomenclature it keeps an internal name a variable for uh, this line segment because you may have several line segments i may have a f a g a h whatever uh, as the case may be i don't like this color i want to make this uh, brown so i go back to the arrow thing and then uh, this is the menu where i will change this uh, magenta i will change it to brown lo and behold and we have this i can also play with the type of uh, the size of the line so 7 is a thicker line i can have a dashed line etc <coughs> all these are possible okay um, uh, so i have uh, got the fixed link so the next thing that i want to do is to build a, a put the crank and since i want this to be a dynamic one where i should be able to change the crank angle and also do an animation we are going to go and look for this so called slider which is an important uh, thing in geogebra so you click somewhere on the graph here uh, it, uh, this menu comes up i want an angle slider because the crank angle is going to change so i get an alpha equal to 45 degrees good so now uh, for now we don't have to worry about it we are going to go 0 to 360 because this is a crank and uh, we want one uh, the resolution we want is about 1 degree you say click okay again i don't like this uh, color uh, so i go back to the uh, click uh, arrow menu click on this and i can change the color to uh, say um, blue okay so i change it to blue so that is what it is now <clears throat> the next step is of course to construct the crank so right now uh, the slider says i have an angle of uh, 45 degrees so i am going to go and look at this angle with given size command and i am going to start from one point is o4 the other point is o2 and we have a counter clockwise so from o2 a counter clockwise thing of 45 will be drawn but we don't want to do this 45 we want it to be tagged to the angle alpha because this has to be a dynamic uh, angle change so if alpha changes to 60 i want that so i tag it to so i remove this 45 and i say alpha so to do that of course uh, the keyboard i will go pick the greek letters and click alpha and you can see i have got alpha here and then i say okay so the current angle is 45 therefore uh, you see that we draw a line i mean the the point a is actually o2a is at the same distance as uh, o2o4 so you can see that uh, it is a dynamic thing if i change alpha the point a kind of moves around right now 114 so you can see i marked uh, a, a, a certain angle okay so let's uh, Uh, go back here and leave it at some arbitrary angle now what we do is we uh, <coughs> first draw a line uh, which is passing through o2 and a so i click on those two you can see it says line o2 comma a and it also gives you an equation for the line um, so this is kind of something that comes in geogebra <coughs> all right next thing i want to uh, decide on the crank size i'm going to decide that it is going to be 1.5 cm so to do that what i do is i pick a circle command uh, with center and radius the center obviously is at o2 and now i specify the radius for the crank which is 1.5 cm so you can see a circle has been drawn with center at o2 and uh, the command is circle center radius so if you have three points it will be circle abc and so on and the equation of the circle is uh, is out there the, so the center you can see is 4 comma 1 and the radius square is 1.5 square which is 2.25 so a very intuitive geometry based uh, software which is very nice to use um, all right now uh, to get the exact crank size what i am going to do use the intersect command so the objects that uh, need uh, where the crank is actually going to sit here which is the intersection of this object with this object and you can see i get two points c and b and what i am going to do i am going to move myself a little bit up uh, the uh, uh, menu you can see uh, if i i am going to choose c so i am going to uh, when i click on this b disappears it doesn't mean that it is left the, the thing if i click it back again it shows up but now it is kind of disappeared there 
next what I want to do is to hide the circle as well as uh, the line so that um, these things uh, and the point A which was uh, how I marked that angle so now I go back and draw a segment so I will say O oh, 2 to C and let me pick a green color for the crank so that is now set you can see now you can check that it is a crank I can now uh, push this back and forth and it, it, it behaves like a crank all right okay so I am going to choose um, so the other thing that I wanted to show you so when uh, uh, let, yeah, we are here let me pick this I can highlight what is the uh, length of this if I go to this uh, AA and say value uh, it gives me the value 1.5 of course I can say name and value so what it means is that this line segment is nomenclatured as H and its value is 1.5 so here let us uh, simply hold only the value similarly here let me put down the value uh, which is basically two centimeters now I am going to choose both the um, coupler as well as the rocker to be five centimeters uh, in length so the smallest uh, uh, link length is one and a half but the largest is uh, five so five plus 1.5 is 6.5 the other two dimensions are five and two which is p plus q is seven so l plus s is less than p plus q 6.5 is less than seven therefore it is going to be a Grashof mechanism and uh, <clears throat> I am of course looking at uh, the smallest link to be my crank and, and, and therefore I am going to create a crank rocker here. All right. One thing that you can do if this angle is irritating you so again when you put your menu you uh, have to go back to this arrow menu and then when you click on that angle this gets highlighted you can see the beta here that highlights if you click that it turns off so it won't display so if you uh, put it back on it displays okay so let me remove it for the time being because you can read the angle anyway uh, from this slider that is sitting there all right to uh, complete the construction for the crank rocker i am going to now draw two circles uh, one which is centered at c for the coupler whose radius is five centimeters so i put that in i get a large circle that is sitting like this then the other circle is centered at O4 for the rocker and that's also 5 centimeters. So let me put that there and you can see that there are two intersections. Now uh, we locate those points by using the intersect command. That's the beauty of it. These two objects intersect at two locations D and E. All right. Now, <coughs> anyway, the job of the circle is done so I can uh, hide them. Now I can draw line segments. Uh, so I have two designs now so if I draw a segment C to D let me draw that and then uh, make that into blue color uh, coupler and then D to E let me join uh, let me join that and then change the color so D to O4 I let's say I make that uh, to be uh, purple all right and I have another branch uh, which I can form uh, where I can join C to E so let's do that C to E and uh, let's choose a color um, what shall we choose uh, maybe magenta and um, then at e to o so we draw one more segment and let me choose a black color for that so actually you see um, sorry uh, oops so this is what happens if you don't go back if you want to uh, uh, do some editing you know uh, because we are sitting in this menu uh, it starts to draw lines like this so you can always uh, undo by undoing this so I go back here okay now I have undone that so I, I, if I want to do anything any editing I have to go back to this menu arrow pointer uh, menu uh, so you can see it says move or drag or select objects so I want to kind of uh, move this and center this oops I have now changed all the coordinates it doesn't matter so I push this there <coughs> Now, um, so you see these are the two branches. So one branch uh, where I have assembled uh, the uh, coupler point D, which is above the uh, O2, O4 line, and another coupler point so, um, uh, E, which is below the O2, O4 line. Now you cannot go from one branch to the other uh, without actually physically uh, disassembling this and then assembling that in the other configuration, right? So this we have told you several times, uh, so just keep that in mind. Now. I want to give show the value for this so let me go to that and say value 5 and then click on this and say value uh, 5 click on this uh, show the value which is 5 and click on this and show the value which is 5 
Good. So now we have uh, uh, the crank rocker. Now I want to animate this. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, double click this. So the slider now, so of course you can kind of move it around and see that it is, uh, you know, behaving like a crank rocker. But I want a continuous animation to happen. So I'm going to click on this. And I go to the basic part of it and say animation on. Um, so then it turns on the animation. So slider here, I want to change the slider from an oscillating to increasing so that uh, it is a continuous animation. So you can watch this now. So you see that animating now, the crank is going through 0 to 360, 0 to 360 and you can see the rocker basically going back and forth. And watch the black and the magenta uh, rock, uh, sorry, the purple rocker. The top rocker will never cross 0204. Uh, similarly, the bottom rocker never crosses 0204. They each go to their extreme configurations and then stay put there, right? So this is something that uh, you need to keep in. Uh, you can look at it and, and see that uh, the crash off mechanism, uh, we told you that uh, the rocker cannot cross the line of pivots and I have given you the two branches I have uh, simultaneously animated here using this uh, uh, particular uh, construction. Um, of the crank rocker and uh, so uh, you know please go ahead try to uh, use this video as a, as a kind of a learning tool try to fiddle with it uh, there is another method I'll try to put out a video for that where it can be dynamic so here you know I cannot change the uh, dimensions of the crank uh, uh, coupler and so on uh, I will show you another way that I can create a kind of a, a template uh, uh, or a uh, what I would call as a, yeah, maybe you'll call it a template. And then when I uh, change the dimensions in that template, this thing will dynamically change uh, so I can get the different dimensions uh, very easily without having to reconstruct the whole thing again and again. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. What I will do is I will also show, you know, how easy it is for a particular configuration to use this, uh, I'll freeze this angle. So I can stop animation. You see this little pause button at the bottom here. So if I pause it now, it is it is stopped at that configuration. I can continue the animation if I want to. I can again pause it here. So, you know, these are various configurations uh, that you can stop and, and look at. Okay, so I will come back. We will look at one of these configurations and then say, okay, how am I going to construct uh, a velocity diagram uh, and maybe an acceleration diagram? It is much easier to draw the velocity acceleration diagrams in this rather than a CAD tool because the